and wrap it around on the other side so it kind of locks itself in place. And uh, then I'm going to start it holding both ends. And, and that'll, there we go. Okay. So uh, the way I was taught to wind perns, which are one ended for an empty <coughs> shuttle, um, I asked Norman for about five years how he would wind bobbins. He said, oh, I would never use that kind of shuttle. <laughs> So I just kept asking, and eventually he said, well, okay, I guess I'd do it this way. So his way is to come over to the side, make a little hill, come back, ziggy, 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 little movements, make a little hill, and then work your way back, and just go back and forth the whole time. So you're putting, you're not, what you're not doing is going vroom, vroom, vroom. You're moving in small motions, back and forth, back and forth. And theoretically, that allows the bobbin to unwind smoothly because it never, the action of unwinding it, it's never forced to move dramatically from side to side. So that's that theory. La, la, la. And sometimes I'll get right on the bobbin with my forefinger. Okay, I try not to fill the bobbin up past the shoulder of the, this flange, and it is a false economy, and I can tell you from personal experience, don't overfill your bobbins, especially on the edges, because some piece of that falls off, it gets tangled in your shuttle, you spend 20 minutes fooling with that sucker, and it's just, you've wasted a lot of time. So don't overfill your bobbins, I know it's tempting. Um, I tend to fill bobbins in a 20 minute session and then go and weave all those bobbins and then go and fill bobbins again. Um, if I had all day to weave, I would not fill every bobbin I had and then try to weave for four hours because I wouldn't be able to get up off the bench. <laughs> so it's better physically to, to set yourself up so that you have to get up off the long bench. Um, okay, so the other way to fill bobbins, I would start the same way. I have a number of friends who studied at Becky's Bob Stuga, and she is a Swedish tradition, and uh, winds mostly um, perns like, like on a straw, that kind of thing. But it also works here. And, and Becky says that the way I've been taught to weave is the way lazy weavers weave. Wind, that's the, that's the Swedish approach. So they go back and forth but very consistently and smoothly and evenly. So it, it never piles up in a particular place. One of the reasons I don't like unwinding spools is because it's noisy. <laughs> All right, we have a whole bunch of them. I tried to do a good thing. See where it goes. Okay. Okay. Doesn't sound very comfortable. Okay, so I don't go to the ends as often as I go just inside them. As it gets more full, I try and fill it evenly. And the theory behind this particular filling is that if the bobbin is constantly moving, it doesn't get stuck. And so I'm not going to fill it. Um, and I happen to know, just for your edification, that uh, Laura Fry sets up her bobbins with the yarn on the side. She catches it in the end and just starts winding, and it saves her time. She, she is woven for her living and is pretty mm -hmm. serious about efficiency. So you want to get some width, but always fill more in the center than on the sides. Yeah, that's what we should get more than that. <laughs> yeah. uh, 
uh, and when I lay in new thread, this I, might, I would probably pull off and just start over mm -hmm. if I was going to weave with it. But if I was halfway, I wouldn't want to throw out that much yarn. So I take my new thread and I lay it sideways and then start the wind just enough so that when I finish up the one thread, the tail is going to it basically pop right up. Because if I just lay them this way, especially with linen, linen is really good at hiding. It's gone. It's just gone. And you can spend 20 minutes trying to find it and never succeed. on there as you can, but you want the bulk of it to be in the center and you want it to be even. So. That's how not to do it. Really nice wobble in here for your visual effects. <laughs> so you're just making it's like it's like a bunch of cones sitting on top of one another. And what you want to do mentally is sort of finish, be done with that. Okay, I'm done with that. Now I'm done with this point. Now I'm done with this point. And so once you're done with it, you don't go any farther. So you're, you're creating a, a, a cylinder here that's the same size, and once you finish one section, then you move on to the next one. It looks like you're getting into a real rhythm when you're doing this. Yeah, and my finger is right on that perm. Mm -hmm. um, you have to be a little bit careful with linen winding this way, because you can, you, you can burn right through your hands, and actually oh. sometimes... I'll use another bobbin to hold the yarn and let it run over the yarn. If I've just been, but you know what the advantage of having your finger on it is, <laughs> particularly for this Attention. one, is that it's stabilizing the wobble in there. It's, it's a lot better this way because I'm also I'm holding it up. Um, if I've if I just finished a bunch of warping and I go to wind bobbins, my hands may be kind of raw, and I'd be more likely to use a. Um, Mm -hmm. a bobbin like that. Also, if you buy one of these new, they don't have this wobble on them. This one is, obviously, it's been a studio tool. And it's, so what you want to avoid is the little valleys. I just filled that one up. Mm -hmm. um, so, that, so that the yarn has a clear path. There's some inconsistent dye on the skin. Mm -hmm.